So apparently these new low cost N100 chips can emulate PS2 at 720p. Not bad at all for the price point of these little PCs. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting mini PC from Morphi known as the M9. Now what makes this little PC so interesting is uh, this is one of the first ones that I've seen with the new Intel N-Series chips. These CPUs released at the beginning of 2023 and these are here to kind of phase out Jasper Lake. If you're familiar with Jasper Lake, you know you can pick up really cheap mini PCs with something like the N5105 and it's not a bad little setup. But coming in to kind of sweep it under the rug are these new N-Series chips, and these are now based on Alder Lake. And judging by what I've tested so far, we've actually got a really nice uptick in performance across the board, be it the CPU and GPU, from single core to multi-core with this new N100. And one of the main reasons I'm really excited about these chips here, the new N-Series, is emulation and light gaming on these lower cost mini PCs. So with the M9 for more fine, inside of the box, we're going to get the M9 N100 mini PC. We've also got a mounting bracket with some hardware to get that mounted up on the back of your monitor, bottom of the desk, or even on a wall. And we also get a 12 volt, 32 watt power supply. Now don't worry, this isn't going to pull anywhere near 32 watts. By the end of this video, we'll take a look at total system power consumption because it's actually really, really low for the performance we have here. And as you can see, we're working with an ultra small form factor mini PC. In fact, it's 0.5 liters, might be coming in a little less than that. When it comes to I.O., up front we've got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and around back we've got our power input, 3.5mm audio jack, dual HDMI, both of these will do 4K 60 out, two more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Moving over to the specs, for that CPU we've got the brand new Intel N100. Four cores, four threads, with the clock up to 3.4 GHz. Remember, this is based on Alder Lake. Graphics are handled by an Intel UHD iGPU with 24 execution units clocked at 750 MHz. This will support up to 32GB of SODIMM DDR4 running at 3200 MHz. Unfortunately, it's only single channel in the M9. Would have been really nice if we had dual slots here, but we will pull the bottom off in a second. It's got Wi-Fi 6, and this supports two M.2 SSDs. You can use a 2280 and a 2240 at the same time if you wanted to. Now you can pick this up bare bones from Morphine, or you can get it with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 500 gigabytes of storage, up to 32 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of storage. But to tell you the truth, I would probably opt for the bare bones unit. DDR4 RAM is actually really cheap right now. You only need one stick and it's a little unfortunate. Was really hoping for dual channel because it does help out with iGPU performance. But as you can see, we've got a 2280 M.2 in here. and We've also got enough room for a 2240. Okay, so like I mentioned, I've actually been really excited about these new lower end Intel chips. And obviously we've got the N100 here. Four cores, no extra threads. We've got a base clock of 800 megahertz and a boost up to 3.4. All in, this will pull around 14 watts and that's with the GPU maxed out and CPU at the same time. But the CPU itself is around nine watts. Adding any more wattage to it really isn't gonna help out because I mean, we can just kind of max this chip out in all four cores at nine watts. This one does have 32 gigabytes of RAM, single channel, like we saw, 3200 megahertz. We've also got a one terabyte drive and the Intel UHD graphics with 24 execution units. The N200 has the higher end GPU, but I was only able to get my hands on this, but I gotta say, I mean, for what we have here and the price these are gonna be coming out the door at, it's really not a bad little setup. Wi-Fi 6 makes it really snappy when browsing the web. We'll just head over to Morphine's website real quick. I mean, it loads up everything really quickly for being such a low-end chip. Oh, we'll head over here to the PC section. The M9 N100 is what we got here. Bare bones unit coming in at around 200 bucks. And it's actually really easy to add RAM to this as we saw four screws on the bottom. It uses so damn DDR4, so you can get out really cheap picking up the bare bones unit. Next thing I wanted to show off here was some 4K video playback from YouTube. So we're going with the 4K 60 video. And uh, going into this, I did have a great feeling it was going to handle it just fine because even the last generation of these lower end chips that Intel released, known as Jasper Lake, did a great job with 4K. And N100 is no different. 
Got a few drop frames on the initial load in, but through this whole video, by the end we only had 12 drop frames. Really great performance here, and keep in mind I am using Wi-Fi 6 right now, you could always go with Ethernet if you want to. It would buffer out a bit faster, and you know if I just let it buffer a little more before we even hit play, we probably wouldn't have any of these drop frames here. Next thing I wanted to do was check out a couple benchmarks, and first on the list we've got Geekbench 5. So these scores might not look super impressive if you're working with a more powerful desktop CPU, but for these lower end chips, we're actually seeing a big uptick in performance. Single core on the N100, 960, multi-core, 2658. To put it into perspective for you, comparable Jasper Lake chip would be the N5105, single core, 587, multi, 2078. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, and uh, again, single channel RAM is going to hurt this iGPU, but with Wildlife and those 24 execution units, 2,929, and Night Raid, 4,536. Definitely not going to win any GPU benchmarking awards, but these are synthetics, and now I want to see if this thing can handle lighter or older games, and then we'll move over to some emulation. Here we have Skyrim. Low settings, 720p. I think we could have taken this up to medium settings here. Uh, we're not totally maxing out that GPU. And I didn't use Afterburner because it does use a little bit of resources and we're already working with a lower end chip. But yeah, I mean, we could run this game at 60. I also wanted to test some older Valve source base games. So here we have Half-Life 2, high settings, 1080p, getting an average over 100 FPS. Actually, over 120 FPS on average. So far, looking pretty good, but these are older, easier to run games. And when it comes to these uh, source base games, Left 4 Dead, Portal, you're not going to have an issue with it. So let's move up to something a bit newer in comparison to the other games we just tested. Grand Theft Auto 5. 720p, low settings, we can get an average of around 33 FPS. Was hoping for a little more out of it, but I didn't think we were going to get a constant 60 even at 720p with this game, given what kind of iGPU we're working with. Now there is a chance if we got our hands on the N200 with dual channel RAM, we could get up there, you know, mid 50s, but with this setup here, even with dual channel, I think we're only going to get up to around 41 on average. So when it comes to AAA gaming, it's just not going to cut it. We don't have enough power on the CPU or GPU. But where this thing really shines is emulation. First up, we've got some PSP using PPSSPP. Chains of Olympus, kind of our go-to test. We're at 3x resolution, DirectX 11 back in. Not an issue to run these PSP games. And you know, seeing how well this is running at 3x, the easier to run stuff is going to be able to be taken up to about 5 and even 7, depending on how hard the game is to emulate. Next up, we've got some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator, and I wanted to show you here, we're going to take this up to 720p. This is F-Zero GX on the hardest track to emulate, Firefield, and at 720p, we're getting 60 FPS out of this. Very impressed by seeing what this little chip can do with GameCube emulation, so I figured we'd go ahead and test out some PS2 at 720p. So here's PCSX2, 720p, DirectX 11 back in. I also tested God of War 2. With that, I did have to drop it down to 1.5x resolution, so not quite at 720p. But there's a lot of stuff we're going to be able to run at full speed on this chip. I think that these little mini PCs are going to be great for smaller emulation boxes, and I will be doing a Botocera test on this or emulation station. I'd like to see how it handles all this stuff in Linux also, but the last one I wanted to test was Wii U. Now I think what's holding us back here is that single channel RAM. Bayonetta using SimU 720p. If you take a look at my Windows performance overlay in the top left hand corner, you'll see that my GPU is maxed out at 100%. I got a feeling if it supported dual channel RAM, we could run this game here at 60fps in Windows. But I still want to test out some Linux emulation just to see what we can do with the M9 and that N100 CPU. If you're somebody who needs a low power consumption mini PC, then this would probably be for you. This N100 chip is rated at 6 watts, and at idle, this is pulling 4 watts from the wall. Average gaming, it jumps up to 16, and the maximum that I could get it to pull while maxing out basically everything on this PC was 18 watts. So yeah, I'd consider this a very low power consumption mini PC, and CPU temps were also really awesome. This is an actively cooled system, so there is a fan, but it really doesn't get that loud. At idle, around 39 degrees Celsius. Average gaming, 66. 
And the highest temps I saw out of this through all of my testing was 71 degrees Celsius, and that was even running Cinebench R23. So far, really liking these new N-series chips for these lower cost mini PCs. Now, I can't wait to get my hands on something with an N200 or even an N100 with dual channel RAM. But like I mentioned, we will be doing a full Linux emulation test on this thing because I think it's going to offer some great performance. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the more fine M9, I'll leave some links in the description. And keep in mind, if you're looking for something a bit more powerful, they do offer Ryzen 6000 series mini PCs, but they're going to come in a bit more expensive than this one. If you're looking for a low power consumption, super small form factor PC for web browsing, 4K video playback, document editing, then this is something that I could recommend. And 32 gigabytes of RAM is going to be overkill. 16 is really all you're going to need with this. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will have another video coming up with the M9. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.